Open source has grown to be one of my favorite aspects of programming. I used to think of it as this lower level tier code that people made open because it wasn't good enough to be production level software or for businesses. However, the more I've been into it and the more that I've contributed and allowed people to see my code, the more I've grown as a developer and more seen the good sides of coding. So much so that I made my software as a service platform public. And so in this video, I just want to share the four reasons why I am making this project and software as a service business open source, the reasonings behind it and the benefits that we will get as a result of it being open source. And the first reason why I'm making the code to my business open source is the amount of learning that I am getting as well as the learning that other people will get as a result of seeing the code. And look, as I said earlier, when I started coding, I thought to myself that I had to do everything on my own. I had to learn on my own. I couldn't read other people's code because it would make me feel weak. I couldn't share my code because I would get a worse developer or like, you know, people would take my code or steal it. I don't know, I was a dumbass. However, I have realized now more and more, I've been coding for a year and a half now. You can only go so far if you're doing stuff on your own. The company with a group of five or a group of friends will always be better than you by yourself. And I just think you will learn 10, 20 times more as a person and in an open source project when you have others contributing to it or you yourself are contributing to a project. Like for example, you know, I had some people contributing already like uh, Dominic and um, let's see, Paulos and Dominic and, and Latch. And these people, they taught me a lot about maybe design, about looks. Like I didn't even add these parts to the hover states on here. I didn't know that. And it taught me, who's more experienced than these people, how to do that. In addition, I just think it's invaluable for someone to see the code, which we'll get into, on how to build an application. In addition, I am documenting this anyways. Like I've talked a lot about the software here. And the learning aspect of that is very valuable to see. You know, if you can see the code, to a good application, then that's amazing. You're gonna learn so much from it. And I just think this is a great way to teach and for you to learn. And that actually goes into our next aspect, which is the competition and contribution. And look, I am in the YouTube space, social media space, and the main goal of us, any YouTuber you watch on here that's in the coding space, it's hopefully to teach you how to be a better developer and for you at the end of the day to improve as a programmer in some way, shape or form. And in my opinion, I can only teach you so much by talking like this, you know, talking about open source and talking about data structures and algorithms. However, there is something invaluable, I hope that's the right way of saying it, to looking at someone's program application, just looking at it, taking it for yourself and seeing how it was made so that you can, not really copy, take that and learn from it and put it into your own application. And I just think that, you know, not, maybe other than Fireship, no one does this, shares the code to their crazy application. Like, look at this, Fireship, this is an amazing platform and he has it for people to see, to learn from and, and put into the application. And I personally use some of the his code or he used a different language, but I used some of his inspiration from there and I just put it to my own app. And the other aspect of this is the project, okay? What we're trying to build here is, uh, at least for me, is I'm trying to build a community, which I actually have to name. I don't know what we should call this community. Maybe something like Nizzy's or something. I don't know. <laughs> let me know if you, you have something cool then let me know in the comments. But part of building out a community is to have a main goal. And if you have access, or not at least access, but if you can contribute in some way, shape or form to a project without being judged, then that is awesome for the community because more people are trying to make better code and in a way they're competing for a specific code. And I just think it's amazing for at least my aspect where I'm sharing my software code because that's what I want at the end of the day. I want you to learn. I want you to be able to improve as a developer. And I just don't, I just don't think there's a better way to do it. Now, the dreaded conversation that you've been probably waiting for is number three, which is the money aspect. I build software not only because I enjoy teaching, which I love teaching. I love making YouTube videos. I love building communities. That's it. 99% of it 
is that I love doing this. However, I'm in the West and things get expensive and I want to make money from this. And money is a big part of building software. You know, software as a service, you want to get paid for your services. And a big, you know, letdown is that we think that just because something is open sourced means that we cannot charge for it or that it won't make money because people can just take the code that you wrote. But if you have a big piece of software and there's a lot of contributors, you don't have to pay them. People are personally taking time out of their day to contribute to a project. I would like to contribute to Fireship's project that he's making money from. Not I want to make money, but rather I want to contribute to an open source project. And why I love the open source community is that it's not so infested with money. I just think that money itself, it's not evil. I love money. Money's awesome. I want to buy stuff. But in code, it can really get in the way of really good software because you're always worried about if people are going to like it or you know, you're like, or just stuff like that. And I think that you can still make money off of your software, even if people have access to the code that you used to build that thing. Because let's put it like this, right? If there's a beginner programmer who wants to build the exact same thing as me, which we'll go into in actually Beyond Code, but regardless, if he wants to build the exact same thing as me, he could steal my code, but he does not know how to manage the code. He doesn't know how to monetize the code. There's so much more beyond code, which I should probably get into in a second, than just that. And getting away from thinking that just because someone has access to your code means that you can't make money from it is a big change in mindset, but one that is necessary if you want to contribute to open source or at least see the benefits monetar monetarily from uh, open source. And frankly, I am more than happy to lose a little bit of money but have these benefits of better teachings, of better learnings and growth because it's just worth it. And that actually leads us to the fourth and final aspect of why I am open sourcing my software as a service business. And it's that code and software as a service and business goes beyond just the code itself. Think of it like this, okay? Let's say you have a brick and mortar business, like an in-person business where you, you're selling t-shirts. Like the business of selling shirts goes way beyond just finding a store, getting shirts, designing the shirts, and then selling it to the public. You need to market, you need to find a process of delivering the shirts, you have to find the process of sales and you know developing systems to speed up the processes and make the user experience much better and as developers and as business people especially in programming we have to understand that just because someone can see your code doesn't mean that it's going to result in them stealing from you because look again back to the example number three if someone wants to copy from me okay they're highest point will be copying my code and then having access to a code that doesn't really fit the purpose of what they want. I know what I want to do with this platform. It's a part of a whole, which is the YouTube space and everything like that. And it's a part of a plan that I have for what I am trying to achieve. For these people, they're just cloning what I'm doing. Like the people that maybe want to copy exactly what I'm doing. They're just that. They're just copying from me. Have you ever used an Airbnb clone? No, you probably will just use the Airbnb, the actual original Airbnb. The people who want to copy what I am doing, they're not going to have as good of a product as me because I'm, I'm going to continue upgrading this in the way that I see fit. In addition, this is a personal thing to me and it fits the brand. It fits my style of teaching. It fits everything. You know, only me, I would have a roadmap in my app. Some people just wouldn't have that. And for me, it fits the style. And so if people want to copy me, it won't, it'll be clunky is what I'm saying. It'll be clunky into their branding and the like. And I just think the money lost from someone copying your code, you know, there's always going to be people that like clones, but the loss from that is worth it for what you get in, you know, the amount of money you're making, the competition and the contribution that, you know, you are winning over and the learning that you have. But yeah, 
those are the reasons why I am open sourcing my software as a service. Again, I'm not going to make all my software public like the other businesses, but this one I just think is the right move for me and for you watching this who wants to contribute or learn how production software is made. It's just a very interesting and I think well worth it thing for people to have access to. But yeah, happy coding, good luck, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.